Measures of central tendency, dispersion, histogram, and frequency polygon. Right? So it's, a, it's a fair amount of stuff to do today, and we're going to work our way through this worksheet. So measures of central tendency. You've already done these, you know, some of them. Statistics that describe the middle of a set of data, the mean, the median, and the mode. So the mean, which is indicated by an X with a bar over it, okay, and you'll see that in your calculator. You'll have an X with a bar over it when you go into the stats part of the calculator. Or the letter mu. This is the letter mu. Okay, it's Greek. The X with the bar over top. Oh. Patient. Patient. The mean is the sum of a set of values divided by the number of values in the set of data, right? So you're always asking, what's the class average? That would be the mean, right? You add up everybody's score, you divide by the number of people, that's the mean. The median is the middle number when the data are arranged in numerical order, okay? It's the middle, like the thing they stick in the middle of the road so you can never turn where you want to. I'm going to go four blocks out of my way so I can make a left turn. That's the median. The mode is the number that occurs most frequently in a set of values. Okay? Now, which one of these that we use depends on the data. Right? So sometimes the mean is not the best way to describe the middle of the set of data. Sometimes the median is better. Sometimes the mode. Okay? But these are all of them. Your calculator will do the mean. The calculator will do the median for you. The calculator will not do the mode. So we have to look at how do we do all of these various things. Measures of dispersion, right? So we have measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, used to describe how spread out <coughs> or dispersed the data is. Okay. So the range, the number that represents the difference between the highest and the lowest values, the extremes in a set of data. The range is a single number, right? Not to be confused with range, like domain and range. Where you say, well, the range, uh, the, so I could say the, the range of marks, and this is not real numbers, you know, went from a high of 96% uh, to a low of 40%, and so the range is 96 minus 40 or 56. Okay. So that's the range in statistics. The range is a single number, okay, as opposed to when we do function notation, we've got domain and range. And then the range would be from 40 to 96. This is a single number. Apparently, the only, whoops, only measure of dispersion there. Okay, good. So let's uh, do some calculation. Question number one: The following are marks for a small class on a cumulative exam. 99, 53, 96, blah blah blah. Find the following information for the marks on the cumulative exam. Okay, so find the mean, the median, and the mode, and the range. Okay, so here's what's going to have to happen. In order to get the median or the middle, we're going to have to rewrite the numbers in order from smallest to largest. Okay. So what's the smallest number here? Looks like 41. So I'm going to write 41 down here, and I'm going to just kind of cross it off there, right? Just to indicate I've used the 41, right? Now the next smallest number, I think, is 53. 53. Now the next smallest number, so I'm looking for numbers in the 60s. I don't see anything. So 69. the 70s. 69. Oh, 69, right? Okay, and then cross that off. Okay, then what do we got? 74. 76 and 76, so that occurs twice. 77. Okay, I've done all the 70s. Uh, we've got 82 and 88. And then we've got the 90s, so 93, 95, 95. And 96. So 95, 95, 90, and 99. Now, to make sure that I've got everything, I should count. So originally I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Doesn't guarantee it's correct, but at least the numbers match up, right? We've got 14 in the original set. For the following <coughs> information, find the following information. So the mean, we didn't need to have the numbers in order. We just need to add them all up. Okay, so add all the numbers together and divide by the number of numbers. Okay, so we're going to take our calculator, turn it on. So we got 41 plus 53 plus 69 plus 74. Would you add 76 twice? Yeah, it's there twice. Add. Somebody's marked, right? 77, 82, 82, 82, 82, 82, 82, 82, 82, 85, 95 again. So 1,114. And there are 14 of them, right? So what we'll use to check here is uh, the, the power of the number of people in the class, right? So if everybody's doing this, or at least if enough people are doing this, then we should get that answer, right? So you get different. Now, if you're doing it on a test, you might want to go through it again or something. But I'll actually show you a way to do this using your calculator. So we're going to take that number, 1114, divided by 14. Okay, so it's the total divided by 79. 0.57. Okay, so let's call that 79.6. We'll just round to the nearest tenth. So the mean or the average is 79.6. The median is the middle. Now here's the problem. We've got 14 things out there, like 10. Things. We have an even number of things, so there's no middle, right? There's no number. So if I had an odd, if there were nine things, there's a middle, right? There's four here, four here, and there's a fifth. But with an even number of numbers, so when you're working out the median, if there's an odd number of numbers, let's say there were seven, there are seven numbers, then I got three on either side, so the middle is the fourth, right? There's three here, and there's three here, and there's the fourth. But when I have an even number of numbers, in this case 14, we need to take the two middle numbers and average them together. Okay, so the two middle is right. In order to find the median, they have to be in order. Right? We've got to know where the middle is. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's 77 and 82 are the two middle numbers, right? So that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six numbers there. One, two, three, four, five, six numbers there. We got the two middle numbers. The median, we've got to take 77 plus 82, so we're just going to average them. <coughs> okay, so we've got 77 plus 82. Now I've got to work that out first and then divide by 2, which is 79.5. If you went 77 plus 82 divided by 2, you know, hopefully you'd recognize that 118 is not in the middle of those, right? You go, ooh, wait, I messed up, right? Oh, you got to add them up first and then divide by 2. So the median is 79.5. Okay? If there were an odd number of numbers, it would just be one of the numbers. Okay? So sometimes the median is just one of the numbers in the set, and sometimes it's not in the set. It's a calculated value. Mode is the most frequently occurring. So which number occurs most frequently? 76 and 95, right? So in this case, there are two modes. Okay, so the mode, 76 and 95. Okay, so we got, and it, it's helpful, right? When they're in order, that's easy to see. When they're not in order, it's harder to see, right? So if you're doing this by hand, you really do need to write them down from smallest to largest, double check and make sure you've got all the numbers, count them out, <clears throat> and that. So we go along, we say, oh yeah, 76, 76, and 95, 95. Okay. That would be called bimodal, right? Because there's two modes. Like bicycle has two wheels, right? So this is bimodal, there are two modes. If no number occurs more than once, then there is no mode. Okay, so for the mode, there might not be one. Okay. In a large enough data set, there's likely just a single mode, right, or one or two. Okay, and the last thing is the range. 
So range is the single number, and again, we need these in order, right? So 99, it's the high number minus the low number, and you get the value 58, okay? So range is a single number, right? It's not a range like from a function domain and range where you go, you know, this and that. Okay, so any questions? <coughs> Right? You're going to need to practice these, right? I mean, mean, you probably don't need to practice. You've got a lot of experience doing mean, right? But median and mode may be new concepts, right? So you need to come up with something that works for you. It says, okay, you know, and it's got to work 100% of the time, right? It can't be like 80, 20. You can't be sitting there guessing at stuff, right? So you need to work it out. And so part of the, the book also describes fix it, focus practice, which is try something, and if you get it wrong, then figure out what's going on, right? You might have to read the textbook, you might have to ask somebody, but figure out why did I get this wrong and fix it before you continue on, right? Otherwise, you're just guessing, right? If some of you guys sit there on the test, you look at the question, and it's just like, yeah, I don't even know what I should be doing here. I'm just, I'm just gonna use right triangle trig, right? Even though there's no right triangle in sight, okay? So this is not a right triangle, it's very clear, obviously, to everybody, it's not a right triangle, but you know, at this point, you're kind of in panic mode or whatever, so it's like, I'm just going to use the tangent ratio even though there is no opposite or adjacent side, right? I can't name them. So, okay, but you can't do that. Statistical calculations using the TI-83 or 84 graphing calculator. Stat, edit, enter. Enter values in L1. Okay, so let's go back. Let's put these values into L1. All of them? All of them. Whoops. And there's a plug for the straight A conspiracy. Uh, okay, so here's what we do. Now, what you might want to do first is go second function plus. That takes you into the memory. Number four is clear all lists and hit enter. Okay. Now, reason to do that is it'll clear everything that's in the list, right? So that if you're putting in a new set of data, this clears it. You don't have to worry about Am I overwriting stuff? What if I leave a number there? So you do clear all lists. You go to stat, edit. There's L1. Okay. You put the numbers in. Um, now, they could be the original, the 99, 53, et cetera. It doesn't matter what order they go in. So let's do what I'm going to do is just I'm going to put those numbers in there, right? I know there's 14 of them. So uh, this says L11, or it says your first number, right? So the first number is 99. Then 53, then 96, 82, 93, uh, 95, 74. <coughs> if you're entering a long list of these, you may want to cross them off as you enter them just to make sure that you know you don't lose your space, your place. Just type in That's good. I'm going to make a mistake, right? So I'll do this on purpose. Although I didn't. Do that on purpose. But. Okay, so now it says, what's the 15th number? So number one is, I know that I've got 14 numbers in there. And if I look back at them, so on a quiz, on a test, on a diploma exam, especially on a diploma exam, right? If you're entering a set of numbers, and you will, okay, on a diploma exam, you will be entering a set of numbers. And on this final exam, you will be entering a set of numbers. Go back and check them over, right? So all I do is just scroll back up the list and just look 41, 69, 76, 76, 77, 88, 5. Oh, wait, that's supposed to be 95, right? So I can look here, it's so the 88. So let's fix that, 95. Okay, now, doesn't, doesn't like my 9 because it's weird. Some, okay, 95. Okay, 95, 74, 95, 93, 82, 96, 53, 99. Okay. Now, in class, when we're doing example layers, I'm not going to do that again, right? If I get it wrong, you'll just tell me, wait, I got this, and there'll be like five or six people agreeing, saying the number should be this, and then we'll look back and say, okay, we're going to mess up. Okay, so we got the numbers in. Next step. Okay, you go stat, you go over to calc. You're doing one var stats. You're there, you just hit enter. 
Okay, it says one var stats. Now, depending on your calculator, right? So the 84s will look like this. What list? L1. Okay, that's the one we want. Frequency list. We don't have a frequency list. Okay, that might pop up in a minute. And calculate. If you have an 83, you're just going to see one var stats. All you need to do is hit enter. Okay. So now it calculates the one variable statistics. This is the display we get, right? X with a bar over top is the mean of the values. We will use the Greek letter mu. Good part of drive, apparently. You should take into account the distance when you decide what time to leave. They all leave when the first bell goes at school. Oh, okay. Whatever. Okay, so now you don't know how to use one variable stat. Okay, this is what it means, right? So the X with the bar over top, but we are going to use the Greek letter mu, which is like a U with a tail, right? Or like micro torrent, if anybody's run that, right? Okay. Uh, sigma, this is an uppercase sigma. It's all Greek, right? We use all these Greek letters. Sig that means the sum of the x values. Look, 1, 1, 1, 4, right? That's what we had. We added them all up, right? Now the calculator is doing it for us. Sum of x squared, it's the sum of the squares of the values. You don't have to worry about that. We're not going to use that, but the calculator does to calculate something. S and then little x, so s sub x, that's the, that is the sample standard deviation. It's not the one we're interested in, right? We're interested in this. This is a lowercase sigma, okay? Lowercase sigma, uppercase sigma. You don't have to know that, right? You just have to know this is the sum and this is the population standard deviation. When we do standard deviation, that's the one we want. N equals 14. That's a very good check for how many data values did I enter, okay? Because this tells you that you entered 14 of them. The minimum x value, right? We wanted that. We needed that, right? What's the smallest value? 41. Q1, that's called the first quartile. That means it's the 25% mark, right? We don't usually use that too much. There's the median, 79.5, right? So it put all the numbers in order, and it said, here are the two middle numbers, and it averaged them just as we did, got the median. Q3, that's the third quartile. Okay, So the median's in the middle, right? It's at 50%. It's halfway. Q1 is halfway between the beginning and the middle. It's the 25% mark. Q3 is halfway between the middle and the upper. right? It's the three-quarter mark. Right? It tells you that, that three-quarters of the marks are below 95. This tells you that 75% uh, of the marks are above 74 and 25% are below 74. The max, the max value is 99. If you want to work out the range, you need max and min. Okay? So we don't need to worry about doing this by hand. We're not going to do it by hand anymore, right? Like enter 14 numbers. We're going to use the calculator. We're going to say, I entered 14 numbers. Good. Make sure that there's 14 there, right? That uh, the, the max and the min were 99 and 41. So the range is 99 minus 41, right? You get the range from it. And that's it, right? So that's all it gives you. Okay? We are interested in the fall, right? The stuff that's bolded on the page, that's stuff we're interested in. How many numbers there are? What's the min? What's the median? What's the max? Max minus min gives us range. And we are interested in the mean. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So you're going to have to practice that a bit, right? Question two, find the mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation for each set of data. Round all values to there's 10. Does your say in standard deviation? It doesn't look like you're doing standard deviation. We, we didn't actually write in, I don't know why it says do standard deviation. But it does. But there's no word. Anybody take one of these that has all the answers right here? I do with one. Sure? Yeah. Got one of these, got all the answers. Yeah. Well, they're, they're all going to be written on there. Just I thought I had a sheet that had the answers on there. <laughs> and now I do. Mr. Anna, there's a calculator. There's what calculator? With zero, so. 
Oh, oh yeah, so that's the first thing we do, right? Okay, so let's go through this thing. Well, I can't find my answers. Okay, so go second function mem, second plus in the memory, number four, clear all lists, hit enter. It'll say done. Okay, go to stat, edit. We're going to enter the numbers, right? Four, six, twelve, five, eight. Okay, we want to calculate the statistics. You go stat, over to calc, enter. If you have an 83, you're just going to hit enter again, right? It's going to default to L1, okay? This defaults to L1. It just says the list is there in L1. Don't worry about frequency list. Hit calculate. Okay, we want the mean, X with a bar over top, right? Which we would write as mu. So the mean was 7. The median is 6. The mode, your calculator doesn't give you mode. What do we have to do? Which one occurs most frequently? There is no mode, right? Oh, none. Okay, none. And what's the range? So for range, 12 minus 4 equals 8, right? So 12 minus 4 equals 8. The range is a single number, right? Telling you how spread out the data is. Don't worry about the standard deviation for now. Okay, so you got three more lists. Second, mem, number four, clear all lists, hit enter. It says done, okay. Stat, edit, put the numbers in. Nine, nine, eight, nine, so nine, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eleven. Okay. I'm not going to check mine, right, because with all of you entering it, we'll have enough people checking, right, so that if our numbers are off. Okay, go to stat, over to calc, <coughs> hit enter, enter, enter. And okay, so the mean is 9. The median, okay, we've got to scroll down a bit. The median is 9. What's the mode? Nine. Okay, mode, calculator doesn't give you. You have to look at it and say which one occurs most frequently. This one's pretty easy to pick up on. And the max is 11, the min is 8. So we've got 11 minus 8, which is 3. Okay, just 3, not 8 to 11, right? You don't say the range is from 8 to 11, you say it's 3. <coughs> okay, next one. Second plus, number four, clear all lists, enter, done. Stat, edit. Make sure L1, sometimes for some reason, I don't know why this happens or even how it happens, sometimes L1 disappears. If that happens to you on a test, a diploma, whatever, clear your calculator, right? Second, mem, seven, just do a reset all and it should come back with an L1. Okay, put the numbers in, 300, 34, 40, 50, 60. Okay, stat, calc, one bar stats. We never use two bar stats, we don't even worry about it. Okay, we always use one bar stats. Okay, mean, 96.8. Median, got to scroll down, 50. Mode, what's the mode? Okay, there's no mode, right? And we got 300 is the max and 34 is the min. So 300 minus 34, which is 266, okay? So we can see this set of data, right? The mean is not a very good description for the set. Mean's a pretty good description for these two, right? This one, no, because you got this 300, right? It's what we would call an outlier. Like, you know, I've got 34, 40, 50, 60. Those are reasonably close together. And 300, okay? So that piece of data, that's called an outlier, right? It's like way out there. 
right? It's like way big. And what does it do? It takes the mean, right? What's the mean of these guys, right? It's like 40-ish, right? Or something in the 40. And it moves it, so now all of a sudden the mean is 97. What's the median, the middle? Well, middle, maybe not a bad description for this set of data, right? You might want to use the median instead of the mean. Okay. As a matter of fact, if we're doing house prices in Calgary, we would use the median. And that's what you'll actually hear in the media. Right? The media uses the median. Coincidence? Coincidence. Probably not. Yeah. So the, the media uses the median because it's only off by a letter. So you'll hear about the average house price in Calgary. They're talking about the middle house price, right? Because that way we know half the houses are cheaper than that and half the houses are more expensive than that. The problem with using the mode is you get a few really, you know, there's some 10, 15 million dollar houses in the city. They're outliers, right? Like they're way out there. They're going to pull the mean towards them. Like the 300 pulled the mean and made it 97 when that's not really a good description of those numbers, 97. <coughs> okay, next one. Second, ma'am, clear all lists, enter. Enter. Stat. Edit. Make sure it's L1. If it's not L1, when you go to do your statistics, you're going to get something like zeros, right? Which you know, okay, I don't think this is zeros. So then you got to go back and look. So what do we got? 325s and 215s. Okay, so I got five things. Stat. Calc. One variable stat. Just keep hitting enter. Uh, the mean is 21. The median is 25. What's the mode? 25. And the range? Okay, so remember, range is a single data value. <coughs> Second, clear all lists. Enter. Stat. Edit. Put the numbers in. Ten. Three. Find it easier to concentrate when the weather is warm? Okay, the mean, 8.3. The median, 8. And we got max and min, or so 8. 17 minus 1 is 16. Do we have a mode? 3 and 8, right? There are two modes. Okay. Don't put parentheses around them, because you'll make a point out of it. So we don't want to make a point. We make a point. Do you learn better and warm weather? Because I heard there's school in July. Oh, 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 oh. Well, you're sitting there doing that's okay. I'm a half an hour late, and now I'm going to make up for that by not paying any attention during the lesson. I got my I got my phone out. I didn't bring my calculator with me. Perfect. Well, get it out. Like <laughs> frequency, the number of times a particular value occurs in a set of data. Right. So talking about the frequency, how often something occurs. Question three. For question number one, a list of cumulative marks was given. Organize the cumulative marks in this frequency table. So sometimes we don't care about the individual marks. We want to know how many marks are in the 90s, how many marks are in the 80s, how many marks are in the 70s, and so on. So complete the marks and frequency column of the table. Okay. So we're just interested in how many marks were in the 90s. So we go back and we count. And there were apparently five of them. How many were from 80 to 89? There were two of them. How many from 70 to 79? I'd like to count them. Four? Okay, what's the next range? 60 to 69. How many marks are there? Okay, one mark from 60 to 69. What's the next range? 
50 to 59. How many marks are there? One. And the next one then is going to be 40 to 49. And there are how many? I'm hearing one. I'm hearing two. If only I hadn't asked for it like three times. I didn't even. I didn't even. I wasn't even paying attention. No, no kidding. True words were never spoken, and they're now recorded on YouTube forever. So there you go. Okay, and there is one of these. Okay, so. The frequencies, you want to double check. Did I get everything? Should add up to 14, because there are 14 marks, right? 5, 7, 11, 12, 13, 14. Doesn't mean you're right, but it means at least you've accounted for all of the numbers, okay? So this adds up to 14, right? It's just a way of checking, did I at least account for all the numbers, right? So if you add that up, it's 13, you know you missed one. A histogram provides a visual statistical description of a frequency distribution of a set of data. Now, it's a picture you can look at, right? As human beings, we tend to like pictures or visual representations better than just a table full of numbers, right? You look at a table full of numbers, it's like, yeah, it make any sense to me. Show you a picture, you go, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense, right? Definition, a histogram is a vertical bar graph. So bars are going up and down vertically with no space between the bars. Okay. So we, we sometimes do bar graphs where there's spaces, but that might be like heights of different mountains, in which case they're actually physically separate things, right? So we say the height of this mountain is this, the height of this mountain is this, the height of Everest is this, the height of K2 is this. They will be separate bars. In a histogram, there's no spacing where the height or area of each bar. So we want to, we need to make sure they're the exact same width, right? Otherwise, we could have misleading statistics. So if you see a histogram presented, one bar is like way wider than another bar. Somebody's trying to cause you to think that's more important when it isn't. Okay, where the height or area of each bar is proportional to the frequency or probability of the number or interval it represents. So frequency is how often and the probability is what's the chance of that occurring, okay? And it's, if it occurs more often, it's more likely, so higher probability. Dry frequency histogram for the marks in the table. Dry frequency polygon using the histogram, and I'll show you what a frequency polygon is in a sec. Okay, so for the histogram, what we want to do is we're going to put the marks on the bottom. So call this marks. I'm going to extend that a bit. So marks here. And this will be the frequency, how often they occur. Okay, so using my newly reacquired one with all the answers on it. The answers are going to be online. It's not like I'm going to keep this secret, right? But it's just handier if I have them in front of me. So frequency needs to go up to 5, right? Because that's the highest frequency. So we're just going to put down a tick, call that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, each tick should be about the same amount apart. Okay, so I don't have a scale on here, I'm just eyeballing it. You're probably just doing the same pretty much. For the marks, I'm going to start here, right? The lowest range is 40. Okay, so we want a range which is going to be 40 to 49. Actually, so let me just mark this dot. Say this is 40 to 49. Now, having chosen that width, I'm now going to attempt to duplicate it. Say that's 50 to 59. So they all should be the same width. Okay, so if you have a grid, right, you might just count out and say, you know what, 40 to 49 is going to be three grid marks, right, one, two, three, and then count out another three, one, two, three, that's 50 to 59, and count out another three, and so on. Okay, now, we don't know what each mark is. We know there is one mark from 40 to 49, so what we do is, we say there's a frequency of one, so we draw a vertical bar, 
with a height of 1 going from 40 to 49. 50 to 59 is also 1, so I'm just going to continue that bar also at a height of 1, or as close as I can get it, which isn't all that close. 60 to 69, same thing, also a height of 1. Draw that. 70 to 79 occurs how many times? 4. Okay, so we need to go take this up to a height of 4, which is about there come across, and then down, right? So I need a bar. So each of the bars has a width of 1, right, or 1 unit or whatever it is, and then a height, which is proportional to the number. So this is 4. So this area will be 4 times this area. This height is 4 times the height of this. Looking at it visually, you could say, wow, there's a lot more of those, right? How many more? Well, I can't have to look at the scale, but... You know, there's four times as many. Okay, 80 to 89 occurred twice. So what we do is go to here and say I need a bar that's got a height of 2. So that should be half of that height. That's This is half of this height. This is double this. This is four times this. This is one quarter of that. Visually, we'll make a pretty close approximation, right? If we just look at it without actually getting into the details of the scale. We can tell visually um, what it is. And then this has to go up to 5. <coughs> and across. OK, so visually we can say 1999 occurs more often, most often, right? That this occurs second most often, right? So this is the second frequency. So that's a histogram. Okay. It's a bar graph, equal width, representing the same thing, right? In this case, a spread of 10 marks. 40 to 49 covers 10 marks, right? 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. That's 10. To do a frequency polygon, you put a dot in the middle of each frequency bar, right? So you go to the top there, you put a dot in the middle of each of these guys. And what we're saying basically is that dot is going to represent that set of data, right? So we don't know what the marks are from 90 to 99. We know there's five of them. They could all be 90. 90, 90, 99. They could all be 99 for all we know. We're going to say, well, you know, we're going to let the middle represent that. Right. So the, the representative marks for the 90 to 99 becomes the middle of that range, or 94 and a half. And a frequency polygon, we join these guys with straight lines. Okay. So to draw a frequency polygon, you join with straight lines. And if we actually went and continued this this onwards, right, we could put a dot down here and represent it. There's no marks over 99, right? Okay, so frequency polygon. Put a dot in the middle of each each bar at the top, and then join the dots with straight lines. And so the frequency polygon sort of indicates a trend, right? Well, it's kind of level here, then it jumps up, <coughs> drops down, climbs back up again for the 90, 99, right? And it gives us another visual representation of the data, right? That's what we're looking for, because we like to work with pictures. OK, if we have any questions on this? No. So keep in mind, right? I mean, all, all the answers are going to go up as a PDF in Schoology, and the lesson will also be up.
in Schoology, so, you know. If you miss a class or part of it, or you're just confused about a certain part that you need to go back in, right? Nice thing about YouTube, you just drag along, right? So if you go, frequency polygon, man, I just I didn't get that part of it. You can go back, drag over to frequency polygon, watch this again. If it still doesn't make any sense, then you know to come into school and just say, one more time, right? Like, I just, I need to go over this. I don't have it down in my head yet, right? Yep. So we can also use our calculators to calculate the measures of central tendency and dispersion from a frequency table. So on the calculator, we're going to enter the values in L1 and the frequencies in L2. So let's go back and do the previous set of data using that, right? Okay. It turned off. Yeah, actually, I, yeah, okay, I have a slight problem with going, okay, I can't really do that for this. So let's not. We'll move on. Okay, so stat, <coughs> calc, enter. So this, the number of goals scored per game, so this data, the table shows the number of goals per game for the first 25 games for a little league hockey team, right? So that's L1, this is L2. This is the number of games that should add up to 25, right? So we've got 6, 13, 24, 25. Okay, so it adds up to 25 games. In our calculator, we are going to enter. So I'm just going to drag this over. Okay, first thing, second plus number four, clear all lists, hit enter. Okay, stat, edit. In L1, we're going to put the number of goals. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. In L2, to get to L2, I'm just going to right arrow over. It's going to jump up to the top of L2. I'm going to enter the frequencies. So this says that two games have zero goals scored, right? That four games had one goal scored. That seven games had two goals scored. That 11 games had three, and that one game had four. So if I was entering the raw data, I would be entering into L1, I would be entering 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 right? 7, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, right? 11 of those. So in L1, I would have 25. Uh, scores that I would enter, two of them would be zeros, four of them would be ones, and so on, right? Now, that's tough to do. We don't want to be entering 25 of these, so instead we can use this frequency table. So when I go to do one variable stats, okay, we go to stat, calc, one bar stats, the list is in L1, right? The list is the frequencies are in L2, so you go second function two. So you're telling, you do that on, you think, okay, so on, a, on an 83, you go one bar stat, and then you go L1, which is second function one, comma, which is right above the seventh, second function L2. Okay, so on an 83 or an 84 that doesn't have <coughs> this uh, menu, you go one bar stat, go second function one, it'll say L1, comma, which is above the seventh, comma, and then second function two, so it goes L2. So your display will look like this. One bar stats, L1, comma, L2. Okay? That's what will actually be in your display. If you have an 84 with the newer firmware or a color one or whatever, then it'll be the list is L1. Frequencies are in L2. <clears throat> hit enter to go to calculate. If you're looking at one bar stats, L1, comma, L2, just hit enter. Yep. Um, Above the seven. Okay. Okay. If you get a J, then you hit a green and then the comma. You don't want the green. It's L1 second function L1 comma L2. Now we're looking at the mean, which is 2.2. The interesting thing we really need to look at is n, right? N is equal to 25. If you forget to do L1 comma L2, or you forget to tell it the frequency list is in L2. Here, let me do this. So we go stat, calc. Let's say I just do one bar stats, and I hit this, and that's blank, and I hit calculate. Then I see N is 5, 
Right? So wait a sec, I'm supposed to be doing the stats for 25 games. Oh, right, so you always want to look at n equals. Right, I forgot to give it the frequency list, okay, which is here. And now when I redo it, I get the 25, right? Do what? Do it wrong and then do it right or just do it right? Okay, you go second, you go stat, calc, second function one, which will bring L1 in, comma, which is the key above the seven, second function two, which will bring L2. So you'll be looking at, and your calculator will say one var stats, L1, comma, L2, and yeah, then you hit enter. Okay? So now we can pull out the numbers. So the mean is 2.2. <coughs> the median, okay, median is just down here. Median is 2. The mode, what's the most frequently occurring? So with a frequency table, the largest number in the frequency table is the most frequently occurring, right? So 11 is the biggest number, so the mode is 3, right? 3 goals. And the range, okay, well, we can go to here, right? It's 4 minus 0, which would be 4. So max minus min, the range is 4. Question? Okay, you need a comma if you don't have the, the display that says list and frequency. So the older calculators, the 83s and 84s that don't have the upgraded firmware, <laughs> don't have that thing as list of frequency How do you know if your calculator has a frequency or not? Okay. You'll see them or you won't see them. I just don't. Okay. If you... Uh, second. Stat. If you go to stat, calc, one variable stats, if you see this, you have the new firmware. If you have an 84 and you don't see this and you have the cable that came with it, you can go to the TI website and download the latest firmware. Okay? If you have an 83, you're not going to see that. You're going to see one var stats and then you've got to go L1, comma, L2. Okay? Nothing wrong with it. You get the same numbers. Okay, question five. The following histogram displays the number of points a particular basketball player scored per game in the first 100 games of his career in the NBA. So, <laughs> so we've got number of points per game and we've got frequency, right? So there's data presented to us and we can use that data to answer some questions, right? So we're given, in this case, we're not given a table. We didn't have to make this from a table. We could have been given a table of data, and from that table, we could have drawn this. Instead, we've got this given. Find the mean points scored per game to the nearest tenth. How are we going to get the mean points per game? You're going to have to go into our calculator. You're going to have to drag it all the way over here. We're going to have to go second, mem, clear all lists. Gonna go to stat, edit. <coughs> go over to L1. In L1, we're gonna enter the number of points per game, right? It'll be six through eighteen. So six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, you entered this one six. You're right. I did. So let's see. Sixteen. Usually it's easier with a physical calculator, right? You know, it's more yeah. Now, in L2, we're going to have to put in the frequencies, right? So we got to figure out what is this frequency. One, so we've got one, two, one, four. So that's the first one. One, then two, then one, then four. Okay, so for 10, we've got what? So I might write these in. 1, 2, 1, 4, 
nine, nineteen, sixteen. Is it sixteen or something? I'm saying sixteen. Uh, thirteen, eleven, twelve, eight, uh, two and two. Okay, I'm assuming that's going to make life a little bit easier, right? Because now I can just enter them off of the. So we got four, so we've got nine, 19, 16, 11, 12, whoops, 11, 12, 8, 2, 8, <clears throat> sometimes the board interprets a touch as you're writing and it puts a dot down, right? And sometimes it interprets it the way I want it to, so I really should be hitting it more with the pad of my thumb or something, right? Bigger thing. Okay, so now we can go stat, calc. You know, you can actually draw, I'm going to show you something. You go to stat plot, turn it on, and I can say, turn it on, on. I can say, draw me a histogram. This is a histogram. Okay, it asks, what's the X list is L1? The frequency list is L2, right? So we got our free, whoops. That's a, whoops. That's L1. Enter, that's L2. And blue's as good a color as any. And I can hit graph. Or can I hit graph? Okay, now, wait, okay, I need to set my window, right? So the window needs to go from 5 to 19. So the X values go from 5 to 19, right? So it matches this, and the Y values, Y values go from 0 to 20 by 2s, okay? And now I can hit graph. And we get well, our histogram, right? Now, here's the thing about the histogram. You can trace. And if you trace along the histogram, actually, sorry, trace. If I trace, see, look, it says minimum is 5, the maximum is less than 6. If I move along here, so for 6, um, then n equals 1. For 7, so that says between 7 and 8, n is 2. Okay. Now, we're not really between, right? We don't have a range of 40 to 49 or anything like that. n is 1, so you've got your frequencies here, right? 9, 19, 6, 13, 11. Okay. So that's kind of neat. We're not going to ask you to really do that stuff, right? But it's interesting to know that, hey, a calculator could do that stuff. Okay, I want stat. I want calc. One, one variable stat. It's going to keep this, right, so as you're still doing it. So make sure you know your frequency list should just be blank or should exist, right? Uh, when I do this, it's like how many games, right? It's supposed to be 100 games, right? So when I hit calculate, N should come out as 100, which it does. So that's good. That means I didn't miss anything. Okay, what is the mean number of points per game for the nearest 10? 12.6. Okay. Watch your rounding. People were losing marks on the test yesterday for rounding. I'm sorry, I can't help you there. Right? If it says nearest 10, one decimal. Nearest 100, two decimal. A numerical response will never say anything other than nearest whole number, nearest 10, or nearest 100. Yet, somebody insisted on giving me to the nearest thousand, right? So, hey, I can put a decimal in the first place. You could on the test. You can't on the real thing. And besides, it's rounded to the nearest hundred. So, find the median. Okay, median is 12. What's the mode? 11. Most frequently occurring, right? 19 times he scored 11 points. Find the range. Okay, so range, you can either do it from this, 18 minus 6. You can do it from this, 18 minus 6. 
So it doesn't matter if you take it off the history and you just say the largest value is 18, the smallest is 6, or you can pull it off the calculator and say max is 18, min is 6. No. So really all I'm interested here for the range is that you have a 12. Do not write 18 minus, do not write 6 to 18, right? Okay, some more questions. Use the following histograms to answer the following questions. Four soccer teams, greenies, reds, stars, and tasks, all played 14 games in a tournament. The histogram shows the number of goals they scored for each of these games. Determine the mean number of goals for each team. Determine the median number of goals. Determine the range of goals. Determine the mode. So basically, we're going to have to sit down. We're going to have to figure these out, right? This is 5. This is 1, 1, 1, 1. And this is 5. This is 3. This is 6. This is 4. This is 1. This is 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2. And this is 3, 3, 5, and 3. Now, each of those should add up to 14, right? Now, all we need to do is enter them into our calculator, one set at a time, right? And work stuff out. OK, so scroll this up. <coughs> First thing, second, mem, clear all lists, right? Hit enter, so it's done. Stat, stat, edit. OK, L1 is going to be 0 through 9, right, for each set of data. So we'll just enter 0. OK, we won't have to change L1. We'll just be doing different L2s and then pulling off the numbers, right? OK, so for the greenies, we've got 5. Zero. Four ones, one. Check that out. So for six and seven, I should have zero. Six and seven are zero. Eight is five, and nine is zero. You got to match up, right? You can't just stop and say, oh, there's no nine. You have to actually put it in. Yes? Six and seven for L. Yeah. What I think. Okay, stat, calc. One bar of stats. Now, I've already set it up, so it's got the L1, L2. It's going to stay in there until I clear the calculator, right, or change it. OK, so we got a mean. Didn't say what to round to. Let's go nearest 10, so 3.9. Uh, yep. You'd do that if you didn't put in a 0 for 9. That would happen. OK, so here's what we'll do. I'm going to save some time. We know what it is. No point doing it four times. I'm just going to write out the numbers for each one, right? So we did one. So x bar, that's the mean, right? It's 3.9. The median for this set of data is uh, 3.5. The mode is 0 and 8, right? Both occur five times. That just comes off of the frequency graph. And the range is 8. For the reds, the mean is 3.3, the median is 3, the mode is 3, and the range is 3. For the stars, the mean is 3, the median is 3, the mode is none, okay, because they're all occurring. So once you get more than like three or four occurring most frequently, you just say there is no mode, right? Like there's too many of them, so it, it's meaningless, right? Because we could say the mode is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, that would make any sense, right? That's just all the numbers. And the range is 6. And for these guys, the TAS, the mean is 6.6. The median is 7, the mode is 7, and the range is 3. OK, so we've got all those answers. I'll leave those up there for a moment. 
and then we'll answer a couple of questions, right? Five and six. We'll do that in the next minute. Okay, so I'm gonna drag that down now because <coughs> the mean of the score, if the mean of ten scores is twelve and a half, if five is added to each score, what's gonna happen to the mean if everybody gets five added to their score? It's gonna go up. How much? It's gonna go up by five, right? So if you add five to everybody's score, the mean is going to go up by five. Okay, it's just going to be averaged in. And lastly, the scores are listed in order of magnitude with A being the smallest. If A is decreased slightly and D, if G is increased by a large amount, okay, hang on before you run out. If these are in order, if I change the highest and the lowest, will that change the median at all? Will the middle move? No, the median, so the median stays the same. So the answer is D, because it's the only one that says the median stays the same. Okay? The mean will increase because that goes up by a lot and this only goes down by a little. And we're done.